One of the most concerning aspects of this J.D. Vance assertion that people without kids aren't as invested in the future and therefore their vote maybe shouldn't uh, count as much isn't the person saying it or what they said because he's just trolling. He's being a troll. You can see that in his uh, clarification yesterday that he has no problem with cats, you know, because he said about the cat ladies. My concern is with those who have tried responding to him by proving their bona fides, their bona fides, um, like, for instance, some people have come to Kamala Harris's defense by saying, oh, but she has two of essentially foster kids who call her Mamala Harris. And I'm like, okay. And then last night I saw that Pete Buttigieg uh, was like, actually, you know, we were in the process of adopting. And that was really painful. Hold on, hold on. The, the response to what the troll said isn't to say, oh, no, 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 I, um, you know, I have... I have parenting tendencies. I, I mean, I almost qualified as a parent, or I was in the process of moving in that direction. No, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> P- being a parent isn't what gives you validation or um, it shows that you're invested in the future. In fact, I, I as a Christian minister, would go as far as to say it's not being a parent that makes you a part of this thing, whether you call it the community of faith, the kingdom of God, uh, the blessed community. It's not being a parent that gets you in. It's that you're a child of God. We are all children of God, and therefore we all belong. Single, married, divorced, empty nesters, with kids, without kids. We all belong. And it's actually our difference, being different together that makes us stronger. This whole mentality of, I don't like you. I mean, this is essentially what J.D. Vance is saying. I don't like you because you're different to me, different from me. (laughs) That's the offensive part, right? Not who he othered or why he othered them. Because under any investigation, at all, this enterprise falls apart. I mean, all you have to do is take a piece of paper, right? Draw across, see so have four squares. Across the top, you write, have kids. Across the, down the side, you write, invested in the future. And you're quickly going to see that there are four categories. There are people who have kids and are invested in the future. There are people who don't have kids and are invested in the future. There are people who have kids and aren't that invested in the future. And there are people who don't have kids and aren't that invested in the future. Right, like any time we're presented with an either or a binary, an us versus them uh, situation where it's black and white, in or out, right, right or wrong, under any investigation, any examination at all, it quickly falls apart like wet cardboard. So I just, (laughs) I don't want to concede the (laughs) rules of the game and play on someone else's field, like, well, I'm I'm sort of a parent. No. No, that's not what makes you invested in the future. In fact, I've been thinking, I have so many people in my life who either don't have kids or had them later in life, meaning not in their 20s or teens, Um, and were heavily invested in the community. And so, like, the four examples that I thought of, uh, one was a missionary church planter. One was an activist uh, who uh, served uh, the city in a civil capacity. Uh, One was on church staff. And the other runs a nonprofit and volunteers at uh, other community groups and gives almost all of their energy to serve others. Now, in all four situations... If they had uh, had kids or gotten pregnant or come into a relationship where there were already kids there, like if you were dating somebody who had kids, in all four situations, I watched these people 
their availability and their energy that could go to serving others and being invested in community and the betterment of the common good go down. Because when you have kids in your life, like, you know, young ones, it takes a lot of time and energy. So for the church planter missionary, when there were little ones, there wasn't as much energy going out to building community. It's just the natural life cycle, right? That's just that stage of life. For the activist uh, serving in the civil capacity, uh, when COVID hit and family situations and needs changed, so did their relationship to that uh, outreach. For the person who was on church staff, if they became pregnant, then their uh, capacity to for those extra hours and all that extra stuff, that changed. For the person who works at the nonprofit and serves in all the community organizations, if they started dating somebody who was uh, had kids, then as that relationship progresses, there may be less energy to go out and serve others with with 100% abandonment, right? That's just the nature of how that works. And so the idea that if you don't have kids, you're not as invested in the future, can I just say the great irony for me is that Jesus did not have children. But we wouldn't say that he wasn't invested in the future. In fact, Jesus was not a big fan of the nuclear family. He never had a good thing to say about the nuclear family. Acted sometimes like he didn't know who his his mother and brother were. He said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword that divides family, which is the opposite of what a normal sword does, right? The Apostle Paul and Peter in the book of Acts in their missionary journeys, right? And what we know became European Christianities. For the Ethiopian eunuch, who in the book of Acts has this miraculous conversion and then takes the gospel to his people. And to this day, there are African Christianities like Coptic Christianity that survive, that look back to that founding. Thomas, who took the gospel to India and maybe as far as what we now call China and the Asian Christianities, The gospel itself, between Jesus, Peter, Paul, Thomas, Ethiopian eunuch, no kids. So for somebody to to say they're not invested in the future. So I know it's a ludicrous thing. I know he was trolling. I know he's being a troll. That's not my concern. My concern is with the responses to concede the validity of this argumentation, this line of reasoning, and then try and justify oneself (laughs) by those terms. So just wanted to throw that out there. Would love your thoughts.